Computational photography has been defined and redefined many times. When I first made up the phrase for a course that I was teaching at Stanford, what I meant was somehow combining a bunch of images together in a computer to make one better image. The reason that we started combining multiple images to make one image is to extend the dynamic range. But there are certain things about color and certain things about tone mapping, meaning darks and lights, mm -hmm. that we can learn from art. I've always been a fan of Caravaggio. This is his supper at Emmaus. Shadows are dark, there's a lot of depth and a lot of contrast. Yeah. And that has been sort of the signature look of mm -hmm. HDR+. Averaging multiple images together cleans up the shadows, makes them not noisy, and that allows us then to boost the shadows so you can see both the shadows and the highlights at the same time. That's high dynamic range photography. We look at a lot of different art. Yeah. So for example, uh, we've been looking at a lot of Titian's paintings. This is Titian's painting of Danae receiving the golden rain. It's a great example of lighter shadows. We've moved a little bit toward that this year, yeah. not crushing the shadows quite as much. Crushing the shadows is a great name for a song. No, is that really a song? It's a great name for a song. Oh, it's a great it's name for a song, the Crushing the Shadows. So, you know, this year we're extending Night Sight okay. to astrophotography. Of all the types of photos to apply this computational resource to, why'd you choose astrophotography? I just think of all the things I would like to take pictures of that I have not been able to take pictures of with a cell phone, and the stars at night has been that sort of holy grail for me. All right, and so let's see what that looks like.